From the Towson Center on the campus of Towson State University in Baltimore, Maryland, it's high school basketball at its best. The Fugit Group and a video present the Raybach Charm City Classic, an installation of their championship high school basketball series. Tonight, it's the Friars of St. Anthony's from Jersey City, New Jersey, against the Poets of Dunbar from Baltimore, Maryland. Hi, everybody. I'm Johnny Holiday, along with the former head coach of Dunbar, Bob Wade, and we are at a packed Towson Center for number one Dunbar against number two St. Anthony's. St. Anthony's has won 40 straight and Dunbar 39. Something will give tonight, Coach. Johnny, something's got to give tonight. Anytime you have the number one and number two teams in the nation uh, playing before a packed house here at the uh, Towson Center, something's got to give. And not often do you get the number one and number two teams to go up against each other. In the AP poll, there you see Dunbar on top and St. Anthony's right behind. They are ranked number two. So this is going to be just a real classic basketball game tonight when these two teams take to the floor in a couple of seconds. Uh, Bobby Hurley, as father, uh, Bob Hurley Sr. coaches St. Anthony's and Pete Pompey coaching Dunbar. It should be a good one. And I think the key to the game, Johnny, will be, will be uh, uh, St. Anthony's ability to, to control the ball. Uh, St. Anthony's has done a super job this year playing uh, top 20 foes, but they've got to control the basketball. And you see what St. Anthony's has done against top 25 teams. They have defeated both of them, a team from North Carolina and also Southern, while Dunbar against top 25 competition, they have rolled over everybody. Nobody's been able to catch uh, the Poets, including Southern in this Reebok tournament. They defeated them, so they are strong and rolling, and their record undefeated 15-0. Exactly. Uh, they had a, an excellent outing uh, last night against Southern. They moved the ball extremely well. They pressured uh, uh, Southern's uh, guards, and they did a good thing. They changed the defense, and that's what they're going to have to do tonight. Let's have you take a look at a couple of the key players. First of all, for St. Anthony's, and this is a good one, too, and Roderick Rhodes. Oh, I love to have him. Roderick Rhodes, 6'7". He can do it all. He's, he's signed with Kentucky. Uh, he's going to have an outstanding collegiate career. Coach Hurley really relies heavily on Roderick Rhodes shooting ability and leadership. And of course, when he's not doing it, then Jaleel, Jaleel Roberts will do it for St. Anthony's. Jaleel Roberts, he's the big guy. He's the guy that really uh, uh, does the bulk of that rebounding. Uh, he's he's the, uh, the go-to guy in the, in the, in the, in the uh, clutch. I like uh, Jaleel Roberts. And coach, when you look at Dunbar, they are so deep and they are loaded with talent. And uh, a guy you're going to look at right now is one of the keys, and that's Michael Loy. Michael Loy is a very strong young man for his size. He's an excellent uh, leaper. He shoots well from the uh, perimeter. Uh, he's scoring close to, what, 20.5 points a game, six assists. A very uh, versatile young man at the guard slot. And there may not be a finer player in the country than Donta Bright. And for St. Anthony's to beat Dunbar tonight, they've got to control him. Donta Bright uh, is very talented. He does a lot of things. He can handle the basketball. He can shoot the three. He can slash. He's a slasher. An outstanding rebounder, and tonight you'll see him. He's always around the ball, Johnny. If there's a miss, look for Donta Bright. Got to ask you this, Coach. Uh, if you're going to beat Dunbar, what's the best way to beat him? You've got to control the tempo. You've got to you got to control the boards, but more importantly, you got to protect the basketball. All right, we're happy you're with, you're with us tonight from the Towson Center, the Reebok Charm City Classic, number one Dunbar against number two St. Anthony's, coming up in just a moment. The scene is set for number one against number two, the best in high school basketball. Johnny Holiday, along with Coach Bob Wade. And let's go to the PA announcer for the starting lineups. Here's Jim West. Charm City Classic featuring the best high school basketball teams in the country. This evening's game featuring St. Anthony's of New Jersey and Dunbar of Baltimore. And now. Here are the starting lineups for this game. First, the Friars of St. Anthony's. At forward, number three, Roderick Rose, 6'7", senior. Also at forward, number 44, 6'5", junior, Jaleel Roberts. At center, number 42, a 6'7", and a half, junior, Rashawn McLeod. At guard, number 21, a 6'3 senior, Michael Goins. And also at guard, number 5, a 5'7 junior, Halim Abdullah. The head coach of St. Anthony's is Bob Hurley. He's assisted by Ed Rich. 
And now, for the Poets of Dunbar. At forward number 15 of 6'2 senior, Michael Lloyd. At forward number 30, a 6'6 junior, Keith Booth. At center, wearing number 33, a 6'6 senior, Dante Bright. At guard, number 14, a 5'8 senior, Paul Banks. And at guard, number 24, a 6'1 senior, Cyrus Jones. The head coach of Dunbar is Pete Pompey. He's assisted by Paul Holmes, Gerard White, and Jerome Hendricks. The referees for the game are Dave Krockfelder, Sean Hull, and Terry McCauley. Scoreboard operators, Jay Robinson. The official scorer is George Dival. Well, tonight's officials, Dave Krockfelder, Sean Hull, and Terry McCauley. And Bob, you and uh, Woody William started the uh, shaking hands with the opposing coach with the players uh, when you were coaching at Dunbar. Yeah, a, a number of years ago, uh, Woody Williams and I decided uh, to, to have the youngsters to go out prior to the start of the ball game and shake uh, my hand and, of course, shake Woody's hand. And Woody was coaching at Lake Clifton. We had a ver a such a uh, heated, heated rivalry. And prior to the game, you know, the, the adrenaline was pumping not only with the youngsters, but, of course, with the crowd. So it sort of diffused it. And yeah. uh, the coaches here in Baltimore have continued to carry it on. Well, we saw that a few minutes ago as the introductions were taking place, introduced by Jim West. Each player would go down and shake the opposing coach's hand in a gesture of goodwill, and we are set to go. Happy you're with us on this top flight high school basketball telecast. Number one, Dunbar. Number two, St. Anthony's. Both undefeated. Tip controlled by the Poets. And this crowd of close to 7,000 at the Towson Center will certainly be uh, decidedly on the hand Outstanding baseline move on Cyrus Jones' part. Young man has got a tremendous basketball future ahead of him. He does the little things. Abdullah yes, yes. is number five for St. Anthony's. The ball out of bounds, and they turn it over. Gary Stein has a word. Gary? Johnny, this is going to be a very... Uh, Thank you, Gary. Let's go back to live action. 14 is Banks. 33 is Bright. Booth with a rebound. When you look at these two teams, Coach, quickness goes to which side, Dunbar or St. Anthony? I think uh, Dunbar because uh, all five youngsters on that on the floor right now can handle the basketball, and they can fill the lane. Of course, they can uh, make the, the outstanding uh, pass and the break. Look on the outside. Jones misses and knocked out of bounds. Now let's try Gary again and see if that mic is working. Gary? Thanks, John. Talk to Bob Hurley, the head coach for St. Anthony, before the game. Their players just started thinking about the game today. Fans and media have built it up for weeks. Not them. Back to you. Thank you, Gary. Baseline drive and a jumper. No good from St. Anthony's. Jaleel Roberts. It's a 2 nothing game, and maybe both teams a little bit tight here in the early going. Well, that's to be expected. Uh, a big ball game. Packed house, it's to be expected. Well, Donna Bright gets his first two tonight, and it's 4 0 Dunbar. He's, he's very crafty around on that baseline, Johnny. This is outside a three by one. He has it all. That's the guy we've talked about ahead of time, Rhodes. And Oh, he can fill it up from downtown. At 6 7, he goes outside or inside. At 21 against Southern. It is 73 64, St. Anthony's win. And Rhodes can rebound with the best of them. He's a coach's dream. Well, you had some uh, guys that, that did fairly well when you were coaching at Dunbar. Muggsy Boats comes to mind, among others. Among others, Reggie Lewis, Reggie oh, Williams, yeah. David Wingate. I didn't want to have all of them. Oh, I tell you. You can just keep rolling them off. <laughs> Four to three. Young Bar League in St. Anthony. Boy, <laughs> stays right with it. Nice muscle move by Bright. The Flyers come up with a ball, and Bright with a reach in foul. 
Bob Hurley, the head coach of St. Anthony's. Pete Pompey for Dunbar. Dunbar's already won tournaments in Hawaii, Myrtle Beach, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. They're used to this kind of tournament play. They have a lot of miles uh, under their belts, I tell you that. <laughs> and Keith Booth makes the deflection. And then the Poets throw the ball away. He stole it again by Booth, kind of hanging around. Ten foot jumper, no good. And the official calls a jump ball, and the possession arrow belongs to St. Anthony. Very, uh, very heady, heady play on uh, Keith Booth's part to and make six, that interception. Six times, St. Anthony's had the ball. They've turned it over four times. That's not good. Johnny, Six two. Johnny, that's what we talked about at the beginning of the ball game. How the guards, they've got to be able to handle that pressure. Michael Lord is a very intimidating uh, young man. He can uh, he can really get chest to chest with you and try to intimidate those young guards. So it's important that St. Anthony's uh, try to control the tempo. And this also is an important factor that Donna Bright has already picked up a second personal foul. That's crucial. Uh, he picked up some early fouls, I think, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And Coach Pompey had to go to the bench, and uh, the young man Mobley did a, did a super job coming off the bench. Roberts is 44, Abdullah is 5. And that pass to Clark. The club. 6 to 5, Dunbar by 1. And here comes Halim Abdullah. Tipped away, but last touch by St. Anthony's, Dunbar ball. Four minutes, 18 seconds to play, and this is the first quarter. Johnny Halim had a problem uh, trying to make up his mind uh, whether to uh, pull up at the uh, foul line and shoot the jump shot or, or make that entry pass to the wing. And another whistle blows. Tennessee coach in a game like this, it, Officials really call it tight in the first couple of minutes. Establish the fact that they're not going to let things get out of control as you see Pete Pompey have a seat. I think so. Uh, that's a big ball game. And uh, Coach Hurley, he's screaming at the officials right now about hand checking, pushing off. And so is Pompey. So they're trying to keep control. Six to five. Dunbar with a one point lead over St. Anthony's. Number one leading number two. Down to three. By, my, by Roberts. I say Anthony's the first lead of the night. Eight to six. And at the other end. Uh, Lloyd buries the jumper. Nine to eight. Dunbar now with a one point lead and a reach in foul to the backcourt on Paul Banks. And that's his first. And that's the first on him. And with three minutes, 37 seconds to go in the first quarter, we've got a timeout. Dunbar in a seesaw affair with a one-point lead over St. Anthony. Along with Bob Way, Johnny Holiday, courtside, the Towson Centers, 9-8, to eight, Dunbar with a one-point lead. And Johnny's interesting, uh, St. Anthony's 3-5. of five. Uh, from the field shooting 60%, Dunbar is 4 of 12 shooting 33%. Turnovers, as we said before earlier, it's going to be key. St. Anthony has five, and of course Dunbar has two. We just saw a nice slam by Michael Lloyd of Dunbar, All-American of the Ports. Time is back in. Carlos Cueto is number 10 for St. Anthony. Well, let's go to Gary Stein for a quick comment. Gary? Thanks, John. From behind the Dunbar bench, traditionally the first sub is the first guy to the coach's left. In this case, it's Alexander Mobley, a six foot nine sophomore. Dunbar may need his height later on because of the big front three 
for St. Anthony. Back to you, John. After the block shot at the other end, jump ball arrow points to Dunbar. And the poet Savage, St. Anthony's. Looking to go to 12 and 0. Good move. Nice move, Rose. With a nice give, and McLeod gets the hoop. He's got four. Johnny, just outstanding ball movement on uh, St. Anthony's part. Dunbar is a very, very good basketball team. They do a lot of things well, and they, will, they need this from Paul. Paul Banks, he's got to be able to score from the perimeter. Banks, a little guy, only 5'8", 175 pounds, 9, 10 to 9, St. Anthony's by one. 42 is Rashawn McLeod. Has it knocked away, blocked, and here come the Poets. That is Booth, nice move, and a foul, a blocking foul against St. Anthony's. And it's going to be a Michael Goins. That's his first. Two minutes, 15 seconds to play in the first quarter. And I see why you like Booth, because he has good body control. He does He does a lot of things well. He's 6'6", six, six, tremendous size, uh, just a junior. He's going to be probably uh, on the top of recruits in the Baltimore metropolitan area since uh, uh, Quentin Daly and, uh, and Reggie Williams. So attempt is good, and Booth has his first point of this game. That ties it at 10. Ah. And it remains tied. Rebound, Roberts. Cueto in the backcourt with the ball, guarded by Paul Banks. Trying to get the inside with a pass to Roberts, picked off. Here comes Roy back the other way. Nice pass. <laughs> Unfortunately, Booth can't hit the reverse layup. It's a great bounce pass in the baseline. And a foul against the Poets. And it's against uh, Cyrus Jones. That's his first. Anthony's ball. The Friars inbound. Nice move off the glass from the crowd. He's got six of their 12. Dunbar's allowing uh, easy, uh, those easy baskets underneath the boards. Uh, last night they were successful in shutting down St. Raymond's from, from inside. Well, the crowd has hit, all, hit three of his four shots tonight. And at the other end, a jumper by Jones is good. Cyrus with a second field goal, and we're tied at 12. Very steady ball player, Cyrus Jones. Second tie of the game, and that time uh, just couldn't handle the pass, and Terry Hunt loses the ball out of bounds. Dunbar ball, turnover, St. Anthony with seven, and Dunbar with three here in the first quarter. And Coach Hurley is, uh, is substituting very, very uh, freely. He will go a little deeper than Pete Pompey, won't he? Yes, he will. Paul Banks. And Dunbar by two. Johnny, they're gonna, they're gonna, they really need that from Paul Banks because St. Anthony had begun to uh, slough off to give help inside with uh, against Booth and Bright. The foul is called on Jones. That will be number two on Cyrus Jones. Away from the ball. Holding ball on Cyrus Jones. Dunbar. And two against St. Anthony. The crowd misses the shot and a foul called against the prior. And after the missed shot, McLeod commits the personal foul. Let's see if, uh, if Dunbar now begins to work inside because uh, uh, McLennan has, what, two fouls now, John? Already, yeah. Fifteen is Lloyd. Thirty-three is Donna Bright. And the rebound, Cueto trying to go between two defenders. And last touch, they say, by Paul Banks. It'll be St. Anthony's ball. 
Coach Bob Hurley down to our right. Powerful <laughs> set of lungs, huh? You can hear him all the way outside, but uh, but he, he really uh, demands uh, full control of his team. He has it, and uh, they've really, really been playing well. They execute extremely well. well. As we mentioned earlier, because of the intensity of such a game, that's going on now with his fourth basket. A little bit tight with St. Anthony's and Dunbar, even Steven here in the first quarter. Hey, you couldn't ask for anything better than this one. I tell you, 14-14 all at the end of the first quarter. Long Super way to play. go. Number one against number two, Dunbar 14, St. Anthony's 14. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, we have played one quarter of this game between Dunbar and St. Anthony's. We talked earlier about uh, some of the Dunbar travels, and that's some of the tournaments that they've been able to win. Beach, Beach? Yeah. Hey, they, as we said before, they've got a lot of miles out, out of them, I tell you. St. Anthony's, uh, uh, Johnny, before we start the second quarter, just to give you a little wrap-up on the first quarter, St. Anthony's was 6 of 10 uh, from the field, 60%. Dunbar, 6 of 17, 35%. Free throws, Dunbar, 1 of 2. Rebounds. 7-5, uh, uh, St. Anthony has the edge, and turnovers, 7-5. Seven, seven turnovers for St. Anthony, three for Dunbar. Yeah, that's why this game is even, but on the pass-off, offensive foul is called on Roderick Rose. And that's number one on the senior, goes 6-7, All-American. Second quarter just underway here at the Towson Center, 14-14 our score. Number one, Dunbar. Almost every major publication, St. Anthony, trying to take that spot over with a big win tonight. Over it, Dunbar. And the officials got a foul on Keith Booth away from the ball. That's his first. Well, I'll tell you, that's, that's a very interesting uh, matchup inside. Both of them, both youngsters, they have tremendous pride. They're great athletes. And uh, they were really going in like a, a bull in the ring on that one. Bob, when you were coaching at Dunbar, I guess you stressed belly to belly, inline to inline defense. That's true, especially when you know we we, we did not want uh, the, the opposing team to walk the ball to the court on us. Now that basket for St. Anthony's. Given to Rhodes. And at the other end, Dunbar comes back with a hoop by Banks. So many people look to the big three, night in and night out. But Paul Banks and Cyrus Jones, they've done a yeoman's job coming in, uh, rising to the occasion. And Roberts from the left corner with his second field goal, 18 to 16. St. Anthony's maintaining a two-point lead. Little Paul Banks who runs the offense for Dunbar. Top of the two, wide open jumper, good by Donna Bright. Bright with four points, tied at 18. He's two for seven for the night. Dante has an excellent range, uh, but he's very, very effective uh, from that 15, 18 foot uh, shooting area. Peter team. Outstanding. Woo! Five of seven now for Rashad McLeod. That's his fifth field goal. Ten points in a 2018 St. Anthony's lead. That's big time move right yeah, there. That's, that's a big time, I tell you. Up top it goes to Lloyd. And back to White for the two. White's got six. Six, six senior goes 200 pounds. And as we said, he has outstanding range. And Rose. One of y'all. Baseline drive. Johnny, he switched that to the offhand. A left-handed finger roll from the baseline. That shows the athletic ability of Cyrus Jones. He's got six points. 22-20, Dunbar by two. And on the offensive board, foul call on St. Anthony. And it's on Jaleel Roberts. As you look at Coach Bob Hurley now in his 20th year at St. Anthony's in Jersey City. 
And boy, does, has he done a great job. Certainly has. They've been either number one or number two three times over the last four seasons. Dunbar bar by two. Lloyd with a miss. Down comes Rhodes. All up top. Way to knock away from behind. And it's going to be St. Anthony's ball. You hear Bobby Hurley yell out, Carlos, not too much. Referring to the uh, penetration. And Pete Pompey, the Dunbar head coach. Sugar Kane was the initial head coach, and then came Bob Wade. And Pete has done a fine job uh, with the program, keeping the, uh, the tradition alive. And we owe a lot to—we uh, all owe a lot to Coach Kane, who really got the ball rolling. And uh, of course, when I left, I passed the baton to Pete. He's done a super job. That's the second personal foul on Keith Booth. 17 fouls now against Dunbar. So at the bonus situation, Roderick Rhodes at the foul line. That cuts the Dunbar lead to one. Four minutes, 42 seconds left, first half. Dunbar got here by defeating St. Raymond, 93-82, and St. Anthony's over Southern, 73-64. Comes Floyd. Runner no good by Bright. Kept away. Coedo in the backcourt, but some pressure from Booth. Woo! Another three by Rose. And it's a 24-22 lead, St. Anthony. Yeah, this, is, this is a great ball, ball game. Uh-oh, we got a break, Johnny. Ball up. Oh, Roger Rose. Rose has really begun to, ex to excel himself, offensively and defensively. And this is the biggest lead for either team tonight. Four points by St. Anthony. Yeah. Basket counts. He's fouled. He goes to the line. And the foul is on McLeod. That's his second substitution now. I said McLeod. It wasn't McLeod. Who was that last foul on Paul? It was 42. That's uh, Rashawn McLeod. He's got two personals. And at the line, Keith Booth for Dunbar. Just some excellent leaping ability by St. Anthony. Coedo with pressure from behind from Lloyd. And Dunbar takes the ball away, right with it. It's just a constant pressure. The guards have got to control the ball. Put up jumper by Booth is short. Outlet pass to Goins. And Goins. Foul. The foul is on Michael Goy. That's a big call, Johnny. Michael Lord uh, saved the basket that time. That was a three-on-one break. Fires have turned the ball over ten times to Dunbar five. It's a lot of turnovers, and they've got it. They've got to keep them down if they uh, intend to be in this ball game. Dunbar with a four, rather St. Anthony's with a four-point lead, 26 to 22. Three minutes, six seconds remain in this first half. 26-24, let's make it. Another team in the corner. And a foul is on Michael Cooper. And that'll be the first foul on Cooper has just come in the game. 6'3", 160-pounder. 
think they called a reach that time, Johnny, on uh, on Michael Cooper. They had the double team set up perfectly uh, right there in the baseline uh, area. But uh, youngsters have a tendency they, they want to reach. How do you prevent them from doing that? <laughs> you tell them to reach Don't for the reach. sky, reach for the ceiling, and keep them there. Robert's free throw attempt is off the mark. Michael Lloyd to Booth. 2.38 remaining, 26-24. It's the Friars leaving the Poets by two. Strong move. He can do it all. He's a slasher. He can shoot the perimeter shot. Excellent uh, leaping ability. Michael Lloyd with the last basket with six points. We're tied again, 26 all. Ball almost goes back court, run down by McCall. And Equato. Back up top to Equato again. Swings it left to it. Down the way, three quarter, no good. Off the mark from Roberts. And the lane pull up jumper, good by Bright. And the Poets take the lead, 28 26. Big shot, and, her, and Coach Hurley just jumped up and told his youngsters just to calm down. Dunbar on an 8 0 run. And a miss. Oh, oh, oh. By Roberts, one fall. And last touch by Jaleel Roberts, and out of bounds. And when we come back, it's going to be Dunbar ball. Time out. Minute and a half to go in the half. 28 26. Poets lead by two. Last year, St. Anthony's lost only one game. And that, of course, was to Dunbar and won their final 29 games. There's a nice look at Lloyd with a baseline drive. He's just so quick. Uh, he has an excellent first step, and, uh, and he has excellent body control. Michael Lloyd, 6'2", 165 pounds. Standing room only tonight here at Towson. So this Reebok Charm City Classic. Dunbar with the ball. 130 left in the first half. And the way this thing is going back and forth, this may come down to the final, final of the ball game. Exactly. Well, Booth will make sure, or rather Bright will make sure that may not happen, a three-pointer. 31 26. Five point lead for Dunbar. And at the other end, a line drive jumper by Roberts. That's a big shot at Jenny for Dante Bright. Uh, hits a three. And St. Anthony's comes right back and uh, answers the three. 31 28. I think, Coach, they made that a two. Oh, that's a two. That a two down okay. I thought it was a three also. Yeah. 40 seconds to play, first half. Three point Dunbar lead. Keith Booth with it. Alexander Mobley's come in. He's in the right corner. Booth will take it one on one. Nice move to the hoop. Rebound, St. Anthony's Road. There's Mobley, the young man. Only a sophomore, 6 7. On the final eight seconds, jumper off the mark, no good. By Lloyd. And at the buzzer, shot thrown up by Rhodes, way off the mark. And it's a 31-28 game. Oh, what a half. Coach, is this all you expected it to be? Exactly, you know, when, it, when you have two, two great teams, two outstanding coaches, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's to be expected. And uh, the youngsters play extremely hard. Uh, they execute well. They're uh, outstanding athletes, and uh, it's to be expected. All right, Gary Stein is standing by with Bob Hurley, coach of the St. Anthony Friars. Gary? Okay, I'm down here on the sideline with Coach Bob Hurley. Bob, I know you want to get to your club. One quick question. How do you think you've handled the Dunbar pressure so far? Um, the young kids have done relatively well. I think uh, Cueto came in and did a much better job than the first kid. As I had said to you, we're just going to play, uh, you know, we're doing it by committee. 
and he did a good enough job to stay with him. Now, if we can just finish some plays down here with the defensive rebound, you know, I'm happy with the kind of shots we've been getting. I think our kids around the basket have gotten the ball in pretty good position, but we've been a little weak finishing shots. So I think if we can do that, and if we can continue to take care of the ball, we'll, you know, we'll hang right now. We're within three, and we actually were plus four at one time late. Let me talk to him. That's it from down here. Back to you, John. Thank you, Gary. The reason that Bob Hurley was a little late turning around to talk to Gary, he wanted to have a word with the officials as they went past him for the locker room. And like any good coach, you want to get the last word in, let those officials know what you thought about it, huh? Exactly. You, you, you've got to get the last word in. But I think what Coach Hurley was making reference to on the last play, right before the half, uh, he felt uh, Roderick Road had been fouled, Rhodes had been fouled right there at half court. But of course, he didn't get the call. And he wanted to give uh, the official a piece of his mind. So it's halftime. As you see the score, Dunbar leading St. Anthony's by three. We'll be back in just a moment. Johnny Holiday along with Bob Wade. We're back at the Reebok Charm City Classic, the Dawson Center in Baltimore, Maryland. Dunbar leads St. Anthony's, the top ranked to. team of the country, by yeah. 3, 31 to 28. And their coach, you see some of the halftime numbers. Yeah, field goal, St. Anthony's, what, uh, 12 for 24. Dunbar, uh, 14 for 33. 50% uh, for uh, St. Anthony's, 42%. Free throws. We haven't seen uh, too many free throws this ball game. There are a lot of turnovers now. St. Anthony's had 10 turnovers the first half. Dunbar had a very, very respectable five. Rebounds. Uh, St. Anthony's out rebounding Dunbar, 17 to 14. And one of the key players, that young man you're looking at right there, number 42, Rashawn McLeod. He had 10 points in the first half. Here's an excellent move you're going to see coming up right now. A nice entry pass and a reverse by Mr. McLeod. And McLeod with 10 points, Rhodes with 11 as St. Anthony's warms up to our basket down to our right. And when you think about Dunbar, well, they're mighty deep. Cyrus Jones, you see number 24 with six first half points. Donna Bright with 11 points. And uh, let's take a look now at this particular play, Coach. That's uh, uh, Paul Banks passing to uh, Cyrus Jones. And he, Johnny, he laid that up with the left hand, a left, a left, fin left hand finger roll off the baseline. That's just a great move for a young man. And uh, I've said before, all during the telecast, I really like this young man. He's uh, he's very quiet, doesn't say much, but boy, does he play basketball. Now, the big three of St. Anthony's, Rhodes, McLeod, and Roberts, 11, 10, and 7 points, respectively. All of St. Anthony's points have come from the front court. In all 28 of St. Anthony's points, only one other player has taken a shot. That's Abdullah. He missed it. So 11 for Rhodes, 10 for McLeod, and 7 for Roberts. And it's great when uh, when, when the your teammates uh, ad adhere to what the, to what the coach is saying. Uh, coach Hurley realizes that the, the bulk of his of his scoring punch is going to come from Rose McLeod and Roberts, and, uh, and 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 the other teammates they they realize that and they give the guys the ball. There's Pete Pompey, longtime coach at Dunbar, number one in the AP and almost every other poll in the country. They've got their hands full tonight. And this packed house at the Thompson Center enjoying this of the best of high school basketball. 31-28 Dunbars. They take the floor. And Bob Hurley, the coach of St. Anthony's, now sends his troops out. Assistant coach Ed Reesh and Sister Mary Allen, the athletic director, and on Pete Pompey's staff is Paul Holmes and Gerard White and Jerome Hendricks. Now we've got 16 more minutes of top-notch high school basketball. Dunbar to the basket to our left. And they now begin the second half with a bright bucket. He's got 13, and Dunbar with a five-point lead. Traveling violation, Rhodes in the lane. And no complaints from Bob Hurley about that call. <laughs> I think he's very upset with that one, with the uh, with the lead official calling the traveling call. And Dunbar throws the ball away at the other end. 7:33 left in the third quarter. 33-28, the Poets by five over the Friars of St. Anthony. 
in the first quarter, Johnny. Uh, Bryce started off, he was one for six, and since then he's on a tear, five or six. McLeod to Rhodes. Back up top of the far left corner, Roberts, trying to force the ball inside, take it away. Here's Bright on the breakaway. It is up to the streaking booth, and layup is good. Bobby Hurley wants to call time right quickly. Well, coach, biggest lead of the game, 35-28 Dunbar. Yes, it is. Excellent uh, timeout call on uh, Coach Hurley's part. He could uh, sense Dunbar was on a run. His youngsters were not uh, uh, doing uh, what they what they should have done, in his opinion. He called a timeout. And, of course, you know basketball games are won and, lo won and lost in spurts. And if uh, had Dunbar been able to get a spurt going there, which Let's Coach Hurley trying to calm it down. Huh? Bob Hurley talking to his team. Let's go inside that St. Anthony's huddle. So it's three, and they've got two layups. From a scouting report, and that time, again, what do we talk about about taking charges? That if we're going to get charges today, we've got to be up one full step further, and which hand is he going to go with, Mike? The, the ball's in the right side of his body, he's going right. So not only did you not step up, but you didn't get him going the way I told you you're going to get him tonight. So we've lost that. Now, let's come on, man. from here. Listen, sit back. We come down we'll here, we'll we go box this time, we start with the low exchange through, and now we run the box <laughs> offense. Rod and Rashawn are the screeners right now. Stay in it, set good screens, run it through, look for the post duck in, cuts, or the lob in the post. Let's go, guys. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, some good advice from Coach Bob Hurley to a St. Anthony's team. St. Anthony's five turnovers to start the game of their first seven possessions this half. They've had it twice and lost it both times. They can ill afford to, uh, to continue turning the ball over. They had a large number in the first half, and they're going to find themselves falling deeper, deeper behind. And if Dunbar gets up on you, look out. 35-28, seven-point poet lead. Dunbar Carlos. Has, excuse me, Johnny. Dun Dunbar has, 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 has uh, been giving St. Anthony's a constant uh, diet of pressure, just pressure defense. Cueto oh, guarded by Lloyd. He'll take the jumper, no good. Rebound. And the oh, we got it, we got it. We got it, it away and comes up with a loose ball. Now to Cyrus Jones. Dunbar trying to go up by nine. They lead by seven. Punched away, but then run down by Donald Wright. He'll go baseline, dips the pass inside. And a whistle and a foul is called on St. Anthony's Jalea Roberts. That stinks. That stinks. <laughs> Roberts court reaching that time. I think Sometimes Roberts uh, has got a, a bit of play that three-quarter defense on the baseline side. Roberts has now picked up his third personal foul. 6 13 to go. When you fall this far behind, and Bob Hurley, you can see a little bit concerned. Traveling violation out front on Cyrus Jones. And Bob Hurley, it appears, Coach, really on these officials. And uh, he wants to try to maintain control of this game as best he can. Yes, a lot indeed. Of the calls aren't going his way. He's trying to gain uh, gain some type of advantage because he's on the road. He wants to let the officials know that hey, we have a ball club out there too. Roberts with a miss. Back in the far corner, Roderick Rose. And the rebound by Goins sets it up again for Rhodes. Rhodes now with 13, five-point lead for Dunbar, 35-30. Just a great individual effort. I'd like to see that thing come back. And right before it goes out of bounds, throws it off the leg of Jaleel Roberts. Very heady play on Dante's uh, part. In the third quarter, 524 left, 35-30 Dunbar. Right inbounds to Lloyd. again. Pack up the middle. Oh, 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 right. Oh, 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 o
defensively, St. Anthony's clogs up the middle. No exactly. That's, that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to negate the, uh, the, uh, the drive. They're shutting off the drive lanes, and, and they're going to gamble on the uh, perimeter shots. Dante Bright had some success early in the first half, hitting threes. They will make Dunbar shoot from the outside. Whistle, foul, down but eighth, and that, if it's on Booth, this is third, and it is. Paul Evans, our statistician tonight, indicates the third is Bob Hurley. Pass some words with Roberts and with Rhodes. Five-point ball game. Crowd somewhat quiet for the number one and number two teams going at it, waiting for something to happen. Here's Roberts. Season open. He got a step on Bright, but then just hit his own foot with the ball. Exactly. We talked about the crowd not being in a ball game. I think uh, 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 Coach Hurley's done a fine job of uh, running his offense, staying close, staying within striking distance of Dunbar. Here's Lloyd to the left corner. Up top to Donna Bright. Take the basket away. Foul before the shot. No basket, and that is the fourth on Roberts. Now is what does Coach Bob Hurley do? Puts his hands on his head and points to his bench. And Terry Hunt comes in. I think Coach, I, I think Coach Pompey is a little upset now, uh, uh, Johnny. He's up uh, giving uh, these officials a piece of his mind. Second team foul against St. Anthony. Dunbar committed one in the second half. It's an air ball thrown up by Booth. And here come the Friars. They try to clear the side that time for Booth one, to go one-on-one. -on -one. Traveling violation. Rhodes took a step before he made his move. Dunbar ball. 14 turnovers against St. Anthony. Boy, I tell you, that last exchange, Michael Lord and, uh, and Roger Groves exchanging uh, some unpleasantries. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a three thrown up by Jones. He's off the mark and out of bounds. Still a five point lead. Biggest has been seven. At 35 28 for Dunbar. I'll try to match that. Jones knocks away the loose ball that comes in the hands of Mobley. Oh, he oh, misses the chippy. Can't hit the easy shots. Dacuedo looks to Rose. Whistle and a foul away from the ball. It's called Alexander Mobley. And that's the first personal foul against Mobley. And we've got a timeout. Three minutes, 41 seconds to play third quarter. Number one Dunbar leading number two St. Anthony's by five. We'll be back right after this. Well, Coach, neither team able to light it up in the third quarter shooting-wise. 29% for Dunbar, 20% for St. Anthony's. And watch this nice move. Just a great individual effort. Before uh, before being called uh, on a vow on a uh, violation, he uh, just laid it up in a reverse spin. Roderick a Rose. English. Little English. Gary Stein standing by. Gary. Thanks, John. That last foul on Alex Mobley over by the Dunbar bench. Head coach Pete Pompey told Mobley, "Don't worry about the fouls." Keep playing physical no matter what and prevent the penetration of the St. Anthony guards. Back to you. Back to Gary. Dunbar ball. They lead by five. Three and a half minutes to play, third quarter. Lloyd. Out of Cyrus Jones. He's been stuck at 35 30 for some time. Jones with a baseline drive. Good muscle rebound. So Donna Bright now with 15 points. And Dunbar by seven. And here is pressure from Booth. Terry Hunt gives it up to 
point off. Let's rebound! Let's rebound! No good. Bad Goins, and here comes Dunbar. Up by seven in control. St. Anthony's has gone ice cold from the field. Virus drone to Bright. One of seven for the Friars here in the third quarter. And Bright just throws up a wild shot. And Rhodes whistled with a foul. That's his second. And Bright will go to the line with two free throws. Seems like uh, Keith Booth is a little upset because he, he feels he can post uh, McLeod and uh, Rhodes inside and uh, they reverse the ball to his side. He wanted it uh, to be uh, dumped down inside. And Dante, of course, drove the baseline. The coach down there to set him down just a bit. Well, what has really severely hampered St. Anthony, they have scored only two points in the third quarter. Bright now gives Dunbar a nine-point lead. And those two points for the Friars have come from Roderick Rose. Exactly. Nine point lead for Dunbar. Dunbar 17 to 4. Oh, Good block. Trying to make it 11. Lloyd from outside. No good. Rebound. St. Anthony's. Jaleel Roberts. on Booth, and that is four on Keith Booth. That's a big one right there, I tell you. Call for reaching oh, in, and uh, I don't know. That's St. Anthony's coach, Bob Hurley. Now it's 20th season. And Pete Pompey at the other end from Dunbar. Substitution in the Dunbar lineup, Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper has come off the bench several times to give Dunbar a lift. I know he had an uh, outside tournament in Hawaii and Myrtle Beach, so he's no stranger to the court, John. Well, Rose got rid of his man with a hefty head fake, and then diving for the loose ball out of bounds is Mobley to try to save it, but it's going to be St. Anthony's ball. 155 left, third quarter, nine point Dunbar lead. Three from Rose. Roger Rose and Dante Dante Bright. That's a personal thing between the two. They're, they are good friends off the court, but they are really uh, mouthing off of one another on the court. As far as foul trouble is concerned, Roberts has four for St. Anthony's. The big boot has four. And it's knocked out of bounds under the Dunbar basket. The Poets maintain possession. Minute and a half to go, third quarter. Six point lead for Dunbar. Up top to Lowe. to the left handed dribble. Takes it baseline, hesitation, gets it back up, fade away. No good by Bright. And the foul, no good again. By Cooper, and a foul. Great rebounding by uh, by the young man Mobley. He really stayed in there. And the personal foul is whistled against. It's just a great rebound by Michael Cooper. He keeps it up high. And Mobley, the big fella. Alexander, 6'7", 215. He's got a nice touch for for such a such a big does. young man. Only a sophomore, six rebounds, and that's his first point of the ball game. Low scoring affair here at the Towson Center. The Reebok Charm City Classic. Mobley gets two and Dunbar again up by eight. 41 33. Here's Rose back to Cueto. Double team. And a foul from behind on Michael Cooper. And that's his second. Michael Lord is really gambling a lot on defense, and uh, 
That time he, he, he forced the uh, double team with uh, Cooper. Of course, Cooper got called for, uh, for the push, but, but Michael is sort of uh, freelancing now. He, just, he is trying to uh, destroy Carlos. <laughs> Right, trying to deny Rose from getting the ball away from the basket. And that can call a lot of contact. That's a great block by the young man. And Bob Hurley giving an air fall to the official on the near side, right in front of that St. Anthony's bench. <laughs> Off the iron, good oh, rebound. Oh. Swatted away and foul on the play by Alexander Mobley. Two points, six rebounds, two block shots, and now two fouls on Mobley. Well, the last minute and a half, Coach, has taken about five minutes to play. Exactly, but you know, if they can continue to, if Dunbar can continue to get this type of play out of Mobley and uh, Cooper, it's really going to take the uh, pressure off of losing Booth. The cloud with all 10 of his points coming in the first half, and he has seven rebounds. And, an 11. and again, as we mentioned at the half, only three St. Anthony's players have scored tonight. McLeod, Rhodes, and Roberts. Well, what you got is five against three out there. <laughs> it, just, it, just it just happened to be those, those were three youngsters yeah. that, that put the ball in the hole for them. But team-wise, St. Anthony's done a good job. And Dunbar, you know, what can I say? They've just played a tremendous ball game, pressure defense, making steals, getting rebounds. 41 to 35. Again, Dunbar by six. Final 18 seconds to play third quarter. Donna Bright with it. All American. Outstanding player. This kind of player, the Baltimore City tournament as a sophomore. This is just the to see if it goes. It counts. It doesn't. Lloyd with a miss. And that's the end of the third quarter. So we had a three point game at the half, and now Dunbar extends it up to 41 35. We'll come back to the Towson Center. Reebok Charm City Classic right after the East World. Element of surprise coming up from behind the St. Anthony bench. Coach Bob Hurley calling for a pick and roll. Haven't done that yet today. We'll see what happens. Don't forget, first possession for them. Dunbar with first possession here in the fourth quarter. We'll see. Back to you, John. Well, Bob Hurley's got eight minutes to put his team back on top. They're down now, 41 to 35, as we start the final eight minutes of play. Rhodes two for four for the Friars. The rest of the team 0 for eight in that third quarter. McLeod with two free throws and Rhodes with two buckets. That's an and outstanding defensive effort on Dunbar's part. Sure was. Fourth quarter underway. Mobley to Michael Lloyd. Bright with a move down the lane and he draws a foul. And judging by the reaction of McLeod, he can hardly believe it. And it's against Rashawn McLeod. That's number four on the 6'8 junior. You know, Johnny, what makes it uh, difficult to, uh, to defend uh, Dante, but he has an excellent first step. But he does a, a, an excellent job of keeping the ball above his head. Uh, on his uh, jump shots, his drive attempts, he just does a, a fantastic job. That's why he draws so many fouls. Bright misses at the line, 41-35. Our score remains, six-point advantage, Dunbar. Good look at Bright, he gets the second. 18 for Donald Bright. It's amazing, my numbers and Paul Evans match. <laughs> Sometime. 42-35, seven points the left hand. Roberts draws the foul. And this time it's on Mobley. That's number three. What, what St. Anthony is, is, 
Anthony is attempting to do now. It's a, it's a, it's a high uh, uh, baseline, uh, foul line entry, and they're trying to do the dump down to the, to the other young man on the block. So it's, a, it's almost like a triangle and two that they're running. Roberts has all seven in his the first half. That's number eight. Three of 12 from the floor and six rebounds for Julia Roberts. 42-36. Flyers cut the poet's lead to six and five. Double Trying to double the ball. ball. Yeah, on Lloyd. And the Friars are successful. They come up with a double team and draw the foul from Dunbar. That was on Cyrus Jones, number three. First call on Cyrus Jones. And the Poets have now committed seven fouls and one on one at the line for St. Anthony's. The Friars have five team fouls. There you saw a look at the capacity crowd here at the Towson Center for this Reebok Charm City Classic. Johnny St. Anthony's in the bonus now, and uh, we've got 7 11 remaining in the contest. Well, Halim Abdullah in his first part of the game. It's a four-point ball game, 42-38. That's the first points other than the big three from McLeod, Rhodes, and Roberts for St. Anthony. A big three for St. Anthony and a big three for Dunbar. You got it. 42-39. Seven minutes to go in this game. Great point lead. We've got a timeout call by Pete Pompey. 42-39 with exactly seven minutes to play in this game. At the half, it was only a three-point lead for Dunbar. 31-28, they extended it to nine. And all of a sudden, St. Anthony's coming back in this thing. As you see, the Friars gathered around their coach, and there's Pete Pompey. Let's go to Gary Stein. Gary? Michael B. Foul line extended on Michael Cooper's side, okay? You on top of the top of the top of the foul line, okay? Top of the circle. You on weak block, and Dante's on weak elbow. So if he gets the shot off, if he gets the ball in there, it's gonna try to scope. Don't turn and lean into him. Don't drop your head down, right? Just wanna try to turn, turn, face him up, break it down, give him a head and ball, and just, just try to go right to the basket with the ball so he can get the foul on, okay? Just go power hard, okay? Defense, come on. One, two, three! Defense. Real hard to the basket. They wanna take it to the hoop. Dante is the man. Well, the scoreboard tells the story. The time remaining, seven minutes, 42-39. Dunbar by three. Exactly. Johnny, I think uh, what what Dunbar needs to do now, uh, Mobley and uh, Mobley, Dante Bright, and uh, Cooper, they all have, they're all trying to occupy space in that, uh, in the lane, and uh, I think Coach Pompey might have called a timeout to, to set up a situation where, where it frees Dante up. Michael Lloyd is 15. On him is Michael Goins. That's Jones. Oh, nice move by Jones in the lane. Tough shot. The tip is good. And they gave the basket, I believe, to Bright. Yes. Now he's got 20, and Dunbar a little bit more breathing room. 44-39 lead. Dunbar unbeaten 15-0, St. Anthony's undefeated 11-0. And a foul. And that may be it. It is, and that's it for Robert. That's number and five. He is gone. Let's take a look at what Jaleel did tonight. Well, he fouls out with, uh, with 621 uh, on the clock. He's, he leads with nine points and uh, six rebounds. He's going to really be missed. 6'5", Junior, out of the ball game and gets a nice hit from the fans behind the St. Anthony's bench. Jaleel Roberts beat Pompey, talking to Cyrus Jones. 44-39. 6.15 left in the game. Here is Bright. 
traveling violation by Donna Bright. How many turnovers now for Dunbar tonight? That's eight. And St. Anthony's has turned it over 15 times. Wow, that's, you multiply that times two. I mean, that's just being conservative, but that's uh, less attempts at the basket. Johnny Holiday, along with longtime coach at Dunbar, Bob Wade. And we're delighted you could join us here for this. Great play. Great play by Lloyd to save the ball from going out of bounds. That shows the quickness of Michael Lloyd. Plato on Lloyd. Spinning on him. Goes baseline. Running one hand. But he makes it happen down here than down here. Offensively and defensively. He can he can play hard on he plays hard on both ends. Outstanding talent. The last time down, Johnny. St. Anthony's now running a what we call a little scissors play. in this game. Michael Cooper just left the ball game and uh, Booth is back. Michael Cooper did a super job of buying some time for Booth. And the Flyers lose the ball out of bounds and give it back to Dunbar. In comes Paul Banks. A solidly built young man, wouldn't you say? He's an outstanding football player too. He's a running back and Played a little defensive halfback. He was a very good uh, football player this past year. Under five minutes remaining. <laughs> Mobley with a miss. Cueto with a double team. They tie him up with the back court. It's a great play by Michael Lord. Just, just took it from him. Forced the tie up. Cueto, Michael Lloyd. <laughs> Comes back in, and Bobby Hurley, Bob Hurley has some words with him. Pete Pompey, head coach of Dunbar, checks the clock, shows 4.47 to go. That's Abdullah. 15 for St. Anthony's, Terry Hunt. Now the Poets begin to control the defensive board. Mobley with a rebound. Mobley's just controlling both ends now. He has eight. Foul is called on Michael Lloyd. That's Michael Lloyd is just so quick. He has quick hands. He anticipates well, and he's really causing a lot of problems with, uh, with those guards. The guards are having problems bringing the ball to the court. Michael Lloyd commits the foul. We've got a timeout. Dunbar with a 46-39 lead over St. Anthony's. Time remaining in the ball game, four minutes, 25 seconds. That's Coach Bob Hurley with his Friars. And that 4.25 left in the game, we'll come back in a moment. Back in the Charm City Classic, the Reebok Charm City Classic, the Towson Center, Baltimore. Time remaining, 4.25, and the problem for the Friars, check this shooting percentage from Coach Wade. I tell you, uh, St. Anthony's, they're shooting 13%, Johnny, in, oh. in, the, in the fourth quarter. They have two of 16. They are 0 for 4 in the fourth quarter. And that just isn't like the number two team in the country to have Which, this kind of a night, but it's all caused by Dunbar's defense. I was just going to say that over. you have to give, it, give Dunbar credit. They played a super job defensively. That's a nice give and go, Abdullah, with a feed to Rhodes, and Rhodes with 18. High point ball game again, 46-41. Alim Abdullah tying up. Paul Banks trying to stop him. Booth with a follow. 48-41. Dunbar by seven. Booth with seven points. Nine rebounds also for Keith Booth. Oh, 
Booth has to play soft. He, he's playing behind. He's not contesting the entry pass at all. Abdullah guarding Paul Banks. Banks yes. cut straight, yes. steps up, and it's by Dunbar. It'll be St. Anthony's ball. 3.09 left in the game. And the Poets by five. Yes, it is. This is a very important possession here for uh, St. Anthony. Dunbar has been relentless on defense, and uh, now we have the matchup. Dante. Goes with a run. In one fall, excellent position, and the rebound from Donna Bright. 2.50 to go in the game, and the fans are at the Towson Center applaud Dunbar's effort. There's Banks, double team. Goes past Abdullah, looks the pass back intended for Bright, knocked away, and a foul called on St. Anthony's Michael Goins. I beg your pardon, Rhodes, not going. And that's three on Roderick Rhodes. Well, Bob, if you're Bob Hurley, what do you do at this stage? I think uh, uh, what Coach Hurley's trying to do now is to uh, to isolate uh, isolate his inside players one-on-one uh, -on -one with Booth. Uh, Booth has four fouls. They look to them to, to go down inside and try to for force that fourth foul. And they're in a bonus, Johnny, so if they don't get the field goal, they'll try to uh, get work their way to the foul line. Paul Banks trying for his fifth point misses. 2.28 remaining. Roderick Rhodes up top. On a right in front of him, slides to the right of the floor with him. Abdullah. Down low, baseline. Free for the jumper. Blocked by Booth. Heck of an effort by Keith Booth. That's a great defensive play. Coming from the weak side, giving help. And Dunbar will call time with two minutes and four seconds remaining. They've got a 48 to 43 lead. And the game appears to be in control for Dunbar. Exactly, but uh, it, it, it's not over. It's not over yet. Um, uh, we're talking about a few possessions, and you know we got a three-point uh, line out there. But uh, what Coach Hurley's probably trying to tell his youngsters now, just to calm down. We, they still have time on the clock. Let's look. Let's let's, let's go to our bread and brother. What are this being Roderick Rhodes? And of course, Coach uh, Pompey, on the other hand, is telling his youngsters the clock is not their enemy; it's their friend. Well, let's go right inside the St. Anthony's bench and hear what Bob Hurley's telling his troops. Our problem is we've gotten them going to the goal, and our people going to the goal have not gotten them squared up and got there and take charges. When the guy is at it up in the air, keep your hands up. We didn't steal on that penetration situation. We got to keep this down here on offense. Now we're double post. Right, we keep moving. Well, Bob Hurley saying, keep your hands up. Don't let your hands drop down. And there's a tendency, I guess, late in the game when you're tired to kind of slough off a little bit. Exactly. That's the first. Thing. Well, they say your legs go, but uh, those arms get mighty tired in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, two minutes, four seconds to go. Dunbar 48, St. Anthony's 43. It's been just a wonderful weekend of basketball, the best high school has to offer. And we've seen some great teams here. Bill Spots has put together a great Reebok Charm City Classic. Grounding <laughs> violation, excellent move by Lloyd, but take the basket away. Another outstanding effort on Michael Lloyd's part, but uh, he was called for the Watch the this. Walk. He kind of shuffles his feet. Well, you can see it. It's a jump stop. Right there. And he puts him down again. Yeah. I think what the uh, the fans were upset about, they thought it was contact on the defense. Five point lead, minute 46 remaining. St. Anthony's about to fall for the first time this year, and Dunbar will remain undefeated. Overplay defense, Mobley knocks it away. Both these teams are high scoring teams. But tonight, neither has hit the 50 point mark. St. 
Anthony's ball. I beg your pardon. Dunbar ball. Coach, Coach Hurley very upset uh, with Caesar. With Carlos, rather, very upset with him. Oh, it's Shabbat. Then Anthony, some mild pressure in the backcourt. Lloyd says, I'll take it. Back up. Jones. Out of right. And Lohr knocked away from behind and out of bounds. But Dunbar maintains possession. Minute 14 to play in the game. Well, I tell you, they, both teams still, still playing extremely hard. They have not given up. And Dunbar, very classy ball club. Now Booth is handling the ball. And a bright. Up top again, it goes to Jones. A little keep away time for Dunbar. St. Anthony's has to foul, and reaching in, Rhodes commits his fourth personal. Yeah, a minute to go at 48-43, Dunbar leading. Booth having picked up that fourth foul uh, sometimes back. Uh, he's got seven points, nine rebounds, and three block shots. And Johnny, he came up with a big block uh, about a minute and a half ago. Well, he sure did. Bright's been uh, a bright spot for Dunbar with a nice night of 20 points. And once again, Bob Hurley talks to his team with a minute and two to go. And Coach, I would imagine in your days at Dunbar and the University of Maryland, you might have found your team down by five and time running out and wonder what you can do. Let's go down to the Dunbar bench and slip that microphone in there and catch Pete Fox. We, we got to move the ball so we keep the clock running. They're going to come in fire, so you want to move the ball. Be, careful, be aware of it. And after, pre watch the press. They want to try to press you out there. Don't nobody leave and go down the floor to ensure the ball is down, the ball is back, okay? Make sure the ball is in bounds, all right? Play tough on defense. Don't foul a jump shooter. Box out on the boards. Control the ball. Take care of the basketball. And then open the floor up. Open the floor. Defense. One, two, three. Defense. defense. Uh, is that what you would have said had you been in a situation like that? Exactly. What exactly. <laughs> word for word. No, the spacing, what he's telling, spacing is very important. They're trying to work the clock. The clock is not there. The enemy is their best friend. 102 on the clock. Uh, he wants them to, to have good spacing, spread the floor, uh, move, have good ball movement. And when they go back on the uh, defensive end, keep your hands up. And for heaven's sakes, do not foul the, the jump shooter. And Bob, these uh, youngsters playing in this tournament, Dunbar and uh, St. Anthony, <laughs> seem to be adjusting pretty much to the pressure of number one against number two. Exactly. That was a big miss right there. called against Dunbar. That's number three on Donna Bright. And the clock, and the important thing, Johnny, the clock stops. St. Raymond's and Walbrook High School also in this tournament. And they've done a heck of a job. Simon Grants and New York. Free throw attempt is good by Rhodes. And Rhodes now with 19. Four point game, less than a minute to play. Three point game, less than a minute to play. You're talking one possession. Mobley, oh, good the decision on Mobley's ball. Yeah, nice to back it up. Foul against St. Anthony's. That'll put Dunbar at the free throw line. And the official trying to see which player he called a foul on. And it's on uh, Goins. Calls against Michael Goins. That's three on Goins. So we got 40, 42 seconds left. Bright has 20 points and six rebounds. And three or four. Oh my goodness. Misses at the line, and here comes St. Anthony's. Roderick Rhodes with it after the rebound. 
Friars are down by three. 48-45, 28 seconds to play, and a foul called on Michael Lloyd. Number two on Lloyd. Both teams over the limit, so he's got a chance to bring this thing to a one-point game. That's true. Michael Lord uh, reached in that time. Uh, you know, we want he wants the clock to run, not to uh, reach in and, and commit a foul. It stops the clock. It gives uh, San Anthony an opportunity to put two points on the board and cut it to, uh, what, one. Halim Abdullah at the foul line. Big shot. This young man is three for three off the bench. 48, 46, Dunbar. 28 seconds remaining. Some of those fans who made their way for the exit early and stopped and came back. That's true. He wisely saw it. Got a vote. One quick wow. ball game. Well, we thought there was a timeout, but there is no timeout. No, it's Dunbar with the ball with 28 seconds to go. They lead by one, 48-47. Right in the corner. Baseline, off balance runner. No good, but a foul called against St. Anthony. And Bright shake it up momentarily. Foul is on Goins. That's number four. <laughs> Oh, that was a big play that time. Wright catches on the baseline, makes a nice, uh, nice step to the baseline, and the uh, the block is called. I think the crowd, Coach Pompey is very upset. He feels that St. Anthony's was allowed to go to the bench to get some instructions without using a timeout. And that's exactly what they did. Fourth quarter free throws, the Friars eight of eight, Dunbar one of five. Oh, Bright makes it now two of six. Bright with 21 points. 49-47, Dunbar with 19 seconds to play. Talk about clutch free throws, Bob. Those were two very big ones. Very, very big ones. It gives Dun Dunbar a three-point lead, 19 seconds on the clock. St. Anthony's has uh, possession, and of course, uh, a three-pointer. We have it tied up. But those are big free throws. Don't go away. We'll be back with the final 19 seconds in just a moment. It's Dunbar by three. That's the magic number for Dunbar to remain undefeated. 19 seconds remaining. They hang on, they go to 16 and all. If they don't, St. Anthony goes to 12 and all. 50 to 47, Dunbar by three. This has been a back and forth seesaw game. Dunbar up by as many as nine. And now, that lead is down to three. It's been a great ball game. With, really whichever has. way it goes, uh, it's been a Super Bowl game. Outstanding coaching and uh, tremendous uh, athleticism. Now, Coach, if you're Dunbar, you want to put a little pressure, but no foul. No foul. And especially don't foul the, the jump shooter. Well, they need Here it comes. That's Rhodes. Here he goes. He got it. That's a two with one second. The officials heading for the dressing room, and it's all over. Dunbar has defeated St. Anthony's 50-49. Great ball game, I tell you. And what, what, what a finish! Tremendous finish. Dunbar pushed up to guard against the uh, three-point shot. Uh, would not allow uh, Rodney Rose to uh, get his feet set to, to get that shot off. And he had to settle for the drive, trying to draw the, draw the, uh, the foul, but he couldn't. 
So number two, St. Anthony's, number two in the country, losing for the first time this year. Pete Pompey, as you take a look at Bob Hurley, congratulating his team for a great effort tonight. And there is Pete Pompey standing by with Gary Stein. Let's go to Gary Pompey and the coach. Here with us, coach. Is this the best team you guys have played this year? Yes. And no more needs to be said. They're the best. No question. Your winning streak alive thanks to this guy right here, Dante Bright. Dante, I don't know your numbers, but it was a heck of a game. T tell me about it from your perspective. Dang, I just came on. I just wanted to play hard. You know, I knew it was going to be a tough game. It was a score we only won by one. You know, I'm glad we won the game. Same question I asked Coach Pompey. Is this St. Anthony team the best team that you guys have played? Yes, you know, they execute well. You know, and they play hard. You know, I'm going to give Coach Hurley and this team a lot of credit. But, we, you know, we just came on. We played harder today. Once in a lifetime opportunity, enjoy it. Thank you very much. Back to you, John. Okay, Gary, thank you very much, and thank you, Coach, and thank you, Donna Bright, too. Dunbar remains undefeated as they edge St. Anthony's tonight by a score of 50 to 49. And uh, I think these fans that came to see this ball game tonight really got their money's worth. And some. And some. And some. There was a, there was a great ball game. Uh, uh, Coach Pompey did a super job of. Uh, of getting his youngsters prepared, and you know it's not easy uh, of getting youngsters up game in and game out, but uh, my hat's off to Coach Pompey, who, who again did a fine job of uh, directing his youngsters. And again, Coach Hurley, what can you say? That's Super right. job, uh, really uh, had his youngsters prepared, and a uh, guy like uh, Dante Bright comes through with the big free throws and, uh, and the clutch basket. Well, he sure did. 22 points for Bright along with six rebounds, and there you see our final score. We'll come back with some final thoughts and comments as you look at the trophy, which goes...